readers, I'm Annie. We are back for another reading vlog. I am continuing on with my goal of finishing some more series. I actually tracked it on an Excel spreadsheet because I am a girly that loves an Excel spreadsheet, but I have 71 series that I'm in the middle of. This is so bad and literally all I seem to be doing at the moment is starting a series, reading book ones. It's not good, it's not good. So we're gonna be continuing on. I have already started The Fiance Dilemma by Elena Armas. So let's go back in time a little bit and I will see you guys at one of the check-ins. So I'm at chapter 10 and I am fully obsessed, honestly. I mean, I was kind of expecting to be fully obsessed because I love the way Elena Armas writes. It's just perfect every single time. They've started this whole debacle of this fake engagement. Everything is starting to kick off. They're being expected to like plan a wedding, but honestly, let me tell you guys, like their chemistry is off the charts. Like I'm literally screaming, dying. There is no way that these two are not like destined to be together. I'm loving it. I'm loving them. I love the fact that like, we haven't really lost Josie's kind of like harebrained craziness in this. Like she's still completely bonkers. She's still out there. Like she is running this town the best that she can she's completely nuts about it she's like running her coffee shop running her mouth like i just love her matthew is amazing he's so flirty he's so like into it but then it's like yeah but it's chill though and i'm like <laughs> like they're so good together it's not really like an opposite attract but they are like relatively opposite in the fact that she's like full-on go 100 miles an hour and, and he's like chilling in the back seat just like not really caring too much andrew is about to turn up at the town and i'm like things are gonna go so bad like so bad i just know it and the thing is I'm fully expecting to cry at this because I think literally every single one of Elena's books has made me cry. Full on ugly cry. Like the Spanish Love Deception was an ugly cry like I haven't ugly cried before. chapter 16 i am working my way through i am fully obsessed with this book like i cannot stop thinking about it it is just taking over my brain today i'm at a point in the story where like everything is hinging on the next moment and i'm at a point where i'm like i almost like can't say anything or do anything or work out what's going on i just like i can't focus on anything else at the moment this book is like taking 100 percent of my energy and my brain power and it is amazing like i can't even really talk about it right now because i want to say so much stuff but like i feel like where we're at this point where everything is potentially about to change everything is about to pop off things are about to start happening i'm like i don't want to say anything because it's all about to like it's all about to kick off i've nearly been in tears already elena's nearly had me already in this book i am so convinced it's gonna happen again and how do i describe this book currently without just saying it's a straight up masterpiece and I am loving it. I don't want to even like say anything about what it's about because it's just such a work of art that you have to experience this fully. So I'm going to keep reading probably until the wee hours of the morning and I will see you guys in the morning probably when I finish this. <laughs>
Sadie by Lama by Elena Armas. I'm not gonna lie, I'm really a little bit unorganized in my thoughts at the moment. I really, really enjoyed it. It was a little bit long in the kind of last little segment before you get to like the end end, but there is so much that goes on still. And I think I'm at about a 4.5 star, but I'm probably gonna sit on my rating for a few days. So you will have to wait until I do my monthly wrap up to work out what I did eventually rate this. I really loved the story. Like I was nearly in tears at various points and like the ending was just like chef's kiss perfect. It was just amazing. It felt like so true to the characters, really true to like everything of like who they are, who they stand for. I don't know why this felt like a little bit of a slog to get through, but it did. But the important thing that I actually would like to bring to your attention is my husband's review. Bearing in mind, he's not actually read it. So you spend like the first half of the book cycling through nicknames for what Matthew calls Josie, and I'm not gonna spoil it, but the nickname they settle on is the nickname my husband has for me. So that like really threw me. So I sent him a picture of it and said, I don't know if I should love this book even more or hate it forever for stealing my nickname. He said, depends, is it a good book? I said, yeah. He said, love it then. I said, but he spent 170 pages testing out nicknames. So he sent the side eye emoji, then said 170 pages for a nickname. Author needs to work out what is actually valuable in this story and get to the point, minus one. I said, he's teasing her with them, finding out which ones she likes because they're fake engaged. She doesn't want him calling her sweetheart because it feels too real. So he's making fun of it. But the nickname that they decide on is her contact name in his phone. He said, what a scummer. He should change it to Bish because he clearly doesn't like her. God, I'd like to no longer discuss scummer and his false names. Bad book, one out of five star. Let's read something good now. <laughs> this book is based on lies, deceptions and heresy. Might as well be Warhammer law. <laughs> Just to recap, he's not read it. This is purely on the basis of they stole my nickname. I think that was like the only thing that really pulled me out of the story because like it's not a very common nickname and it's like really weird to see someone else calling someone else that. I'm like, that's me. That's my name. What are you doing? So I think that was like the only thing that kind of like really pulled me out of the story, which is why I'm kind of at a 4.5 because I'm not entirely sure how I feel about it at this precise moment in time. I will let you guys know it in my wrap up when I know. I know the weather's getting colder and that should mean that I should be reading a fantasy and I'm looking at them and I've got Foxglove and Akmaf and well to be fair and a werewolf's guide to seducing a vampire on the physical TV are there. Well guys my Elsie Silver literally just came out and I'm going to die if I don't get straight onto this because I am in desperate need for this book. I'm in desperate need for more of the Rose Hill men. What can I say? I really love the other ones. I've loved like everything Elsie has written. I have no words okay. I love this dedication. It says for all the ones who have felt crippled by the opinions of others. I hope you learn to love what you're doing so completely that all those critical voices cease to matter. And until then, remember that thriving is winning. Go forth and thrive. I love that there's a map in here as well of Elsie Silver universe and it is just like basically placing where the different towns are. And honestly, I cannot remember what the town was in the God Rush Ranch series. It's because you've got Ruby Creek, Emerald Lake, Blisswater Springs, Rose Hill and Chestnut Springs. And I cannot remember. What was the town but this makes me think because there's two extra towns on here is elsie prepping us for like two whole new series please We've also got a reader's note in here, which says, this book contains references to childhood psychological abuse and trauma, substance abuse and death by overdose are mentioned on the page. It's my hope I've handled these subjects with the care and attention that they deserve. I feel like Elsie's really good about one, putting that little note in there and two, generally, I feel like she has handled them with the grace and attention that they do deserve. And I feel like she does a really good job with that. So let's get reading. <laughs> the scheduled viewing. I just got a new package and I'm literally so excited for this. I have been wanting to like look after myself better this year and it's actually something that has proven a lot more difficult than I thought it was going to. I do really have like specific goals of like I want to get to this fitness level or I want to be able to do this specific thing or, or whatever but it's just I want to feel healthier in myself and better in myself and so I have picked up this walking pad. It's literally just been delivered like not even 30 seconds ago let me tell you. I've literally brought it straight upstairs nearly fell down the stairs twice because this thing is 
is heavy. <laughs> I want to be doing some more walking. So this is going to go under my standing desk. With the amount of writing and like world building and stuff that I have planned for my own books and things for the winter, I think this is going to be absolutely perfect. And I'm going to be so able to meet my walking goals in a safe environment because I literally hate going outside by myself and I don't like walking. And I definitely will not walk in the rain, the snow, the wind. Like if it's adverse weather, ain't a hope in hell. Like I am staying inside. <laughs> so there is stuff everywhere and I have a serious cable management problem, but you know, I had to go get my shoesies and properly try this out. So, oh, I'm so nervous. I'm like legitimately going to the table. <laughs> okay, this is, this is gonna change my life. Let me tell you. I feel like I'm 100% about to become that really obnoxious person that's like reading on their walking pad. And this is just gonna like change my life. I just, I feel so good about this. <laughs> into wild eyes i have stormed through this book i mean it's kind of no surprise i always manage to storm through ursie silver books i absolutely love them i did realize that my kindle is going two by two on the page count which is probably why it's felt way shorter than 200 pages because it's technically been 100 of my pages because i like my text super duper tiny i am convinced that Elsie has to be a horse girl because there's like one little scene and I'm, I'm not gonna like hugely spoil it for you guys but there's like one little scene they're grooming the horses as someone who's owned horses my whole life like you know like grooming them and, and doing all like the general care is just like such a normal part of it but there is something about grooming a horse that just like really calms you down and just like mentally is so good for you and I feel like it's one of those things that like you just like don't really understand until you've done it and the way that Elsie describes it is it's literally perfect like I felt like I was in a barn grooming a horse and like it just brought back so many memories for me and I was like full-on blubber crying like it wasn't pretty <laughs> this is what I love about Elsie is like she just like taps into these like really key little moments and like really makes you feel them alongside the character not like you feel like you're watching the character like you feel like you are that character for this like little excerpt and you just like really experience everything fully and I love 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 it I'm loving this story like I love West as a character he's so funny he just like does not take life seriously and he's like yeah why would I be you know serious and normal and boring when I could be silly and make my kids laugh with a little valley girl accent and like do all this like silly stuff and dance around the barn and this and the other like I just love him I'm obsessed with him he's like quite possibly my favorite Elsie Silver guy so far which is a huge thing to say because until now it has been Cade a hundred so I'm like okay and also I'm loving the little caveats from like previous books previous series there's like a few little bits and pieces that like reference other things and I absolutely <laughs> am obsessed if you know you know but I'm not gonna spoil them because like if you don't know like experiencing those little like throw-ins is amazing because it just like really makes the world feel like more complete and like more than just like these isolated series and I absolutely love it. So yes, I'm 50% of the way through. I don't see me not finishing this today, to be honest, or at the very least, it will be like early tomorrow because I'm just wholly obsessed. I mean, we do have D&D tonight. That kind of wipes out my evening for reading, but that's good for my mental health. <laughs> I'm fully obsessed. I'm absolutely loving this. I kind of don't really want to say too much on the plot at this point in time because like there's like so much already going on and there's so much that's already built and I just I don't want to accidentally give something away. Oh my god, the parrot. Cherry the parrot. Absolute MVP. Obsessed. Love her. She's our queen. I need her in my life. My husband is desperately trying to convince me to get a parrot and honestly cherry might have done a better job than him <laughs> but it is currently raining so i feel like if we finish this then we'll probably move on to something a little bit more fantasy it's cold i 
I've busted out the thermal socks already, people. It's not even like freezing cold, but like I've busted out the thermal socks because like I just could not do it last night. But it is a bit miserable outside. It is gray, it is wet, it is dreary. It's perfect fantasy weather. I'm loving this, granted, I'm absolutely obsessed with this. I don't quite know what time of year this is. Fiance Dilemma was like, he like autumn me heading into winter time, so I feel like that was perfect. No idea what time of year this is. I feel like it's summer. Yeah, it must be summer because the kids aren't at school. They're at summer camp. Oh, obviously that means it's summer. Wow. Why did that take me so long to piece together? Anyway, also all of book club is reading Akamath and putting updates in the group chat. And even though I've read it and I know everything that goes on, I feel like I'm missing out. So I feel like we're gonna have to read that next. that but also let's talk about wild eyes by elsie silva five stars instantly just like instant five star like i love it i'm obsessed elsie's done it again i don't think there's anything that i'm not gonna love from her that's not a challenge elsie that's just to keep doing what you're doing okay i absolutely loved it i just knew from page one of like wild love i was gonna love west like he's just so funny he's so full of life you know like even with his two kids like he's just like he's one of these people that like gives the impression of like just never really stops like just keeps going and going and going and going and then like as soon as everyone's back is turned he's like quick five minute breath five minute breath five minute breath and then just like keeps going again and i love that and it's such a vibe and he just like perfectly emulates his daughter emmy and i absolutely love her and i know that i've said before that i like don't like kids and books but emmy is so funny emmy is just like an absolute barrel of fun a barrel of laughs she just like is 100 percent go all the time and she says things how they are and i think my most recent problem was the au pair affair by tessa bailey and that kid because basically the kid says some like really mean stuff to Tallulah and it's like basically like I don't want you near my dad like you promised you wouldn't date my dad because my parent my divorced parents were gonna get back together even though my mum's getting remarried so that kid really bugged me but Emmy's six and she's just like so full of life mum's remarried she's just like oh yeah dad's by himself and I feel really bad for like leaving him because he doesn't have anyone she says that to Skylar at one point and I'm like wow you're a kid that actually understands and like just I love his parenting <laughs> He's just like so calm and it's like, it's like, you know, it's fine. Like we just like, we do stuff, we fix stuff. We talk about stuff calmly and quietly. And I'm like, thank you. I do appreciate that. There's just like so many aspects of him as a person that I really, really love. And Ollie as a kid is like, Mwah, perfection. I think he's only like 10. So he's like a little bit younger than the kid in the young parafer that I really don't like. Like he's a proper like old soul, right? You just like know. He's got this like selective mutism, but like when he talks, like, He's got something to say. He's not just like talking for the sake of it, a little bit like Emmy does. I feel like she's she's very much like me, will fill the silence. Whereas Ollie's like very quiet, but then he's like, I have something really important to tell you and I will tell you and then I'll be quiet again. And so it's like really profound, like not even like necessarily like really profound what he says, like he's only 10. It just like has such a weight to it because he doesn't talk that much. And I absolutely love them both. I love West, I love Skylar, I love the setting, I love Rose Hill, I love Elsie. And I am even more convinced at the end of this book that she's a horse girly. Like she just knows. 
she knows what she's doing in terms of like bringing the horses into it and it's just like absolutely perfect for me it's everything i want so last night i started my reread of akmath and i just i know i'm gonna speed through this book so i'm not just gonna like go into loads of detail about it because i've read this like at least three times through like the whole series yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna start listening to the fantasy fangirls podcast of akamath their sort of like akamath wrap up and everything alongside reading this so i feel like there's gonna be lots of things where i'm like oh my god i didn't even see that oh my god i didn't even see that i'm fully aware i'm gonna finish reading it before i finish the podcast because i've got to finish this in time for book club the time is a ticking. I'm just gonna get on with reading this and then we'll see how we go. But it is miserable AF out there. Like yesterday it was like light grey clouds. Today is like dark grey. It's miserable. Like, it's gonna rain again all day, I'm sure. We're officially in autumn. Summer is over. I'm a little bit sad about it because I am a summer girly. I'm on page 24. So I got 600 left to go. <laughs> this is not a small book. I feel like I always think this book goes really, really fast. And then I'm like, oh wait, you're 600 pages. times I read this every single time the gaslighting the toxicity just like the disgustingness that is Tamlin will always astound me frankly I hate it every time I live for this book and I hate it at the same time I actually don't even have words because it is just like such a work of art because like to be able to feel this much from words on a page is just like astounding. This is a hill I will die on. However, for this vlog, to avoid me just going on and on about this book, which I already love and is a reread and I'm just gonna adore forever, I'm gonna skip past this. So I will see you once I finish this and we come to the next book. <laughs> been a couple of days i have finished akamath it's a five star it always will be valaris is my second home i'm not gonna bore you guys with all the details but one thing i will say rereading this is a whole different experience to reading it for the first time so if you were looking for a sign to reread this series this is it because there are so many things in here i didn't even like recognize on my first read like now having read all of akatar all of throne of glass all of crescent city like everything that is released at this present moment in time reading all of that and then rereading this series i'm sat there and i'm like that links with that and that links with that and i feel like i almost need like a pin board with like the red string to tie everything together but there is like so many things in here that like you just don't even recognize on a first read because you have no idea that it's meant to connect to something but then there's like off-handed comments and we all know how SJM loves to use very specific words to describe things. And there's very specific words that connect to other very specific words in other series. And I'm like, there it is. Like that, there, there it is, there it is. Rereading this is an entirely different experience to reading it for the first time. So I definitely would recommend rereading it. Let's get back on track with continuing our series, back on track with this vlog, A Werewolf's Guide to Seducing a Vampire. I can't help it. I love the titles of the Glimmer Falls books. I'm just like so obsessed with them. They're so funny because you started off with The Witch's Guide to Fake Dating a Demon. Then you had A Demon's Guide to Wooing a Witch. And now we have A Werewolf's Guide to Seducing a Vampire. Like this is one series that I hope just like continues on and on and on because I'm obsessed with it. I absolutely love it. And I think the fact that we're going outside of the friend group now and we're having Werewolf Ben and then the vampire that he gets involved with, like I'm so excited for that because Werewolf Ben was like, like definitely read this series. I've loved this series. 
It's also super cute and super pink. I just, I love the covers of these as well. Like everything about this series is like perfect to me. I'm a little bit sad. I'm not gonna lie. I'm 136 pages into this. I've stopped in the middle of chapter 14. Stopping in the middle of chapter is like basically a personality trait at this point. It's not gonna change anything. So sorry if that annoys you, but it's who I am. I am not like tripping over myself obsessed with this as I was with the other two in this series. And that's making me kind of sad because I really want it to be because I've loved the other two in this series. I think Glimmer Falls is amazing. I think it's so super cute. I love the way that Sarah writes. Like it's such a vibe and I'm just like sad. Like I am just sad. It's not really hitting. The problem is I don't even think it's like a bad book. I think this is a soft DNF. Ben's cute and he's sweet and like I feel like there's like other parts of his character that we just like haven't really quite seen yet. Like we don't really quite know at this precise moment in time why he doesn't like certain aspects of his werewolf side. We've got Eleanor who's a very complex character in herself and I just I just don't really feel like I'm connecting with them the way that I necessarily want to and the way that I have with the other characters in this world um and honestly it kind of took me a minute to place Ben at the beginning because I thought that he was one of the werewolves that was in the neighboring town but actually he's not he's Mariel's boss at the garden emporium so I couldn't even like place him until like a couple of pages and I was like oh that's him oh, okay and like rein back the expectations and i think i am gonna soft dnf it just because it's not really vibing right now i think i'm gonna end the vlog there because otherwise we're gonna be here for another week like i have so much going on at the moment like, my plate is so full you guys honestly so i'm gonna end the vlog there thank you so much for hanging out with me this has been a little bit of a topsy-turvy i've got a couple of books ticked off of my series tracker in terms of like what's released so that's great we're gonna have to come back to a werewolf's guide to seducing a vampire another day. Today is just not the day for it. Probably gonna go cry about it later. But anyway, thank you guys so much for coming to hang out with me. If there are any series that are not on my tracker, well, to be fair, there's quite a lot on my tracker, so. But why not add more? <laughs> Give me some series that I need to read, okay? Because why not? You guys know I love a recommendation. Pop it in the comments down below. I'm not quite sure what the last thing was that my camera picked up there because apparently my memory card is full, which is rather rude. If it's not not the battery it's the memory card it's something going on with this thing but anyway thank you guys so much for coming to hang out with me <laughs> let me know if you have any recommendations for me do all the good stuff down below like comment subscribe ring the notification bell you guys know what you're up to also check out all of my links in the description including the link to my own book and i will see you next time bye <laughs>